Story of a Song podcast, episode 11. I'm Greg Anson. And I'm Bronson Telby. And we're here at Bopnik Studios with the great Anthony Resta and Carriata Satasia. Hello. Hi. They are getting the tracks for the new song that me and Bronson have been working on over the last couple weeks. And they are going to do their magic to it again. And um, we're just going to start from scratch. And basically, like before, just kind of ask questions about what they're doing. Um, like before, this came up from Pro Tools. I gave Cariotti all the, um, and Anthony all the stems and with my notes and the tracks and just what we were going to use. And the recording starts there. <laughs> just at the studio by yourself because Anthony comes in so just, just carry on by himself So that's the first thing that um, was on the tape. So and Anthony comes in the room later. So um, I think in terms of figuring out your process, what 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 were you doing at this point? What what was just carried out? What was um what are you listening for here at this point? Well, um, there's just the song in general, just the just the song in general. Um, nothing specifically, just like to. Get, get, get a, yeah, get familiar what what it's about and like listening to the a lot of times to the vocals um, and like the, the you know the the rest of the music and just see how it feels. When you're listening to the vocals, um, um, is it at a point now? Are, are are you just listening to it from like space, or do things kind of hit you like as like how you might approach it in terms of? Um, sound, um, just how, how you're going to process it. Yeah, um, vocally, just basically, uh, w you know, the parts, like uh, what the lead is doing and then if there's harmony or uh, BVs, what they're doing. Sure. And then just kind of like do like a like a quick assessment, it's like, oh, uh, yeah, I might need to tune this or, you know, the timing pocket mm -hmm. doesn't seem quite there yep. but I get what it's trying to do kind of thing and and I think I think that's very important because the most important thing it, are the vocals like in this I mean every, it's all a scanscape but yeah. people like if you can't understand them I think I've learned that from you especially Anthony like pronunciation syllables like you know people yeah. have to understand your message yeah even even they don't have to try hard they have to just get it it's like if they have to think about it then you've failed something because it's supposed to be automatic it's supposed to be natural you know that's the, that's the hard part is to make it feel fresh and natural because it, it's the tendency for all of us is to overthink you know sure yeah. sure no and, and, and it's a good starting point when you're thinking about a song is like of course you want to listen to the vocals number one yeah I, um sorry i want to add too. like when i listen to those i don't necessarily uh, listen to like pronunciation or like you know intelligibility <laughs> all that stuff that's anthony i always rely on him because i was like <laughs> anthony's gonna hear something that I'm, I'm you know i'm not paying attention to uh but you know just j j just because um well it's it's my second language exactly I was you gonna, know i was gonna uh, bring, i was gonna bring that up like yeah. for people who don't know karyati first link is not english so i think it shows that right. you um music is universal you listen yes. to a melody in the yeah. pitch yeah. and like how many i know the scorpions they're, they're german but they sing in english right like it's really that yeah. like i know no, that's good that's a good point that i just made i love <laughs> the videos that float around about people like saying what they thought songs were famous yeah. songs. Yes. Oh yeah, some of the best ones. <laughs> Those are, are hilarious. The Bee Gees, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. No, so, but that's a really good point, Cariati, because it really shows that like 
you know, you're you're digesting it, but you're not even really thinking about those. Not moves. really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, once in a while, it will like catch my attention, you know, like certain phrase, but not not very no. often. Sure. Um, uh, or or if it's like it's re if it's really weird because like I don't really necessarily listen to the lyrics but sometimes like when the lyric is so weird I would say I don't get it <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then Anthony will hear it and then Anthony will actually interpret it different ways sure. like oh okay I see I get it now this is Karyati getting into the tracks now some of that I don't know what I was doing here, but <laughs> going pretty fast. He's adding some percussion. Not yet. <laughs> that, that's you. It comes later. Now, I know these are the tracks we've recorded. Yeah. Um, that's kind of where it all started um, on the tape. And I think, Mike, because there isn't much more of you editing and doing work on the drums. And these drums, you took Bronson's drums, Anthony didn't play, and they had a complete different sound than what we had a very raw sound. And I know you put samples and did some stuff. If you remember, can you talk a little bit about what you did to reinforce the, the drums that way? Because it's it happens pretty quickly. And like right. all of a sudden, the Anthony's, these sound great. And it's like, this is the only time on the tape where I hear a lot of drum stuff. Yeah, if I remember it correctly, um, I think the first, um, my in initial impression was the, the drum, well, be, being in the smaller size room that I expected, so uh, and then I thought about and then I thought about okay maybe like add like something um, you know sample wise like mm -hmm. a, like mm -hmm. a close mic mm -hmm. kick and snare yeah and then still use the uh, overheads that you guys use but I'm trying to remember on this particular one though I think the overheads was mono or was it stereo oh, it was mono it was mono, mono right yeah. yeah 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 I thought about that and then um, um, and then. Uh, to make to make it sound a little bit more stereo because like the mono thing is actually cool but it's almost too concentrated okay. well at least at that beginning okay, point sure. mm -hmm. so um i i believe i just use like something artificial oh, cool. um very very lightly and that's just enough to like kind of open it up so it's not like too centered centered mm -hmm. i mean you know you still hear it but on this particular song it's like very centered the drums mm -hmm. which is cool and the thing, the thing that I that we, to go back to that I want um, is the drum sample. Could you talk a little bit about the, because because that really changed the feel of the song. Because when I gave it to you, it's just kind of this open roomy like ding. And the, the drum samples you use gave it that intimate thing. And we we, we yeah. kind of missed the boat in recording on that. So when you were able to put that in, it really brought the song to a different level. Yeah, and and the goal is too is is not um, by adding sample wasn't necessary you know like usually when you hear something and then you want to add say sample uh a lot of times you automatically want to go to this like big drum sound mm -hmm. that wasn't the case that because uh, yeah. like it's that's like a good point when 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 um when we were listening to 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 the drum track it was like there's something cool about it being in the small room but um you know it's a little too small mm -hmm. so uh so what w d during the you know ad ad auditioning the the samples mm -hmm. it was the it has that same approach it's like okay we're gonna add more meat into this yep. but uh we're not gonna like blow it up and and okay so to even ask a kind of dumber question that um how do you actually do that in in the oh, mix? Oh, yeah, in, like, okay. Because because the okay. sound is one thing. That's great. That's amazing. But how did you once you decide that? How are you doing this? How is this process being? There done? was one step, slight step before okay, it, because cool. I remember like a lot of times I give him the space to play around with the drums for mm -hmm. quite a while. Like I'll, I'll do whatever, and then once he gets it to a point where he's happy with like technically what's there, then we talk about like 
like an overall vibe like wow this could be very like petty in the verses or you definitely said that y- somewhere yeah, you know, yeah. And it's kind of like that because I love Jeff Lynn's approach and like right. a lot of times those drums are like it's hard to say that they're not really they're they're they're, they're up front and roomy at the same time like right. it's like they somehow um, Radiohead does that a lot too where it's like something is seemingly dry but it's actually quite wet it's like oh for sure and he's a master of being able to create those dimensions and that's what it's about sometimes the effect on the sample and that and the, the room that he's creating is even more important than the sample itself I oh. mean right it's it's, it's more like a oh, like it's a like, combination. like a combination of the whole thing instead of instead of oh okay so now we, we're sample. adding we're adding this sample now this is you know like a big explosive thing yeah that wasn't the goal no 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 yeah. no no yeah. I get I, no but, but it, it but, sometimes becomes but, but, that no yeah. but but that being said I think I think exactly what you said when people think sample they think the basketball the and in this song like like when you heard the demo it the drums that I gave you definitely had that raw like right. and, you, and you brought it to that thing and that, still that, has it yeah it's still but, but but the song needed what you said to make it intimate and go somewhere where the other thing was almost like a live you know sure. like didn't have the yeah whole. it was yeah the, the 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 impression in the beginning it was just like it was it was cool but then like to to to, to try to see the bigger picture mm-hmm. if we were to stick with it it would have been uh, too small, yeah, you know. To, to fight uh, the track. To, yeah, to fight the track because you still y- you want that intimate drum, but you want to ha- to drum to drum to have the impact because it is the pulse, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but okay, so circle back to uh, uh, how. Yeah, what yeah, was yeah it? just how, just just a general like how okay, do you, um, how you do I that? I use I use uh, slate trigger. Okay. To do it, uh, it's a very uh, simple program. Um, Shout out to Slate, and uh, we have a good collection of of uh, recorded samples that we did from different studios, all the way back to Boston, um, and I believe Nashville. the 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 sample use was like one one of the older older samples. And, and, that, and I gotta also say, um, uh, Slate actually has very good libraries. And this cool. is this is a thing me and Bronson do. I've learned it from you, like yesterday. We were recording drums, end of one take, at the end, have them hit every single drum. Like, and it's like, I think every setup you guys do that. And even if it's small, because you just, it's gonna be different. It's gotta fit the track and you just never know where you need that sound. I've learned that from you. Every time we've recorded drums somewhere, at the end, you always get all the drums by themselves. I just um, sort of related to that is um, I just listened to a podcast with Bob Lessett's um, interviewing Gary Katz who produced and co-produced all the Steely Dan records and I guess somewhere around the third album uh, Roger Nichols the engineer started using this machine he invented called the Wendell Jr. It was like literally the first sample replacement thing but it could literally it could not only sample but it could somehow like sequence like it to a click or whatever it would be like almost Mm. like it would like generate like and all those famous drummers that they were using at that time at the end of every session it'd be okay Jeff Beccaro just hit one of each of those toms oh just one <laughs> you know, and, and then that's and, a great and idea. so they yes. had all these famous drummers single hits of all of them yeah. and then they started saying is he using our tracks <laughs> our sounds on other songs that's not right you know well, I'm in the union work with their door open so those are the cars you hear coming down. And on on nice this open hat there. And I think there was a minimum of four bass tracks. All different registers and from different instruments. So um, we were—I was so into the listening to the track. I got lost there. Um, yeah, there was. I played my music, man. I played the FM. What's that keyboard you have right oh, there? Oh yeah, the, the, uh, the electronic. Digital. I don't know if that ended up in there. I played another bass high, and then Bronson played the six string, doubling me and doing some runs that 
got mixed in so there are parts where it sounds like I'm someone's playing bass with two hands like, <laughs> you could never play it on one yeah bass yeah because uh, but so I think the question is is how do you the, the, the bass was put together like it wasn't all over the place but you you sculpted you you pick some of the best parts of different things and I don't know if there was a ton of direction but what is your approach to like a bass track like what, what are some of your favorite like sounds to get and well what? that was that was a little unusual because of the multiple <laughs> yeah. uh, things playing but um, the good news was uh, even though there are multiple playing you know you have the six string and the six string is actually more in the closer register as like say a baritone guitar yes so it actually doesn't interfere at all but in that on the song's purpose the the, the six string was more like a like an added groove thing yep uh, because it, you were doing like mm -hmm. certain runs. Yeah, um, it was kind of bouncy. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that that was the purpose. So that was actually very easy to do, like not much effort. Uh, and then when when um, I guess listening back to that, I just remember the in the uh, the chorus, you basically just pedal on that on that yeah. note with the with the slides. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what you were listening, I think at the same time, I was also listening to that just to try to get. Uh, get it uh slide it ever so slightly <laughs> so that it, it like it grooves a certain way yeah, yeah, and it yeah, bounces a certain way yeah, yeah. and we kind of found okay yeah that was like a good one and whatever that was that ended up in the final version oh cool yeah oh, cool. but yeah because that was interesting because yeah. i when i first heard it too it's like oh wow okay only one note pedaling and it was <laughs> the core like um and i don't know if do you know if this this the the synth bass the one that went barrel like I haven't listened to the tracks. I don't know if the the FM bass made it. I don't remember. Um, it just had the weirdest sound. But like, the way the song came together was like those two sections, the verse and the chorus, were the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, and and yeah. and I made well, them the the co the the verse the verse the bass is actually a melody. No, but 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 when we wrote it, like I went home and did that and came up with the two different parts, yeah. and it kind of came back. And I the what what became the two parts? I just turned off that high one, and then Bronson started making stuff. So what what kind of right. was like one section then became two and now you're right. making it into something different, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is really and, cool. And uh, like editing wise, it was just like, especially, um, was it in the chorus? The the chorus, the, the six string was also playing, right? Yeah, yeah, he was doing the like, he was kind of mimic me, mimic me, the verse is where it goes high. Boom, now, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. verse. I remember it being a little tricky on that, uh, not, uh, but frequency wise, it was effortless because of the you know like one is more like a baritone guitar. Uh, it was the the gr uh, it was the the groove between the two, because like when it when when it clicks. Um, I mean, we're not talking we're not talking about like right on the yeah 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 right yeah you're finding the, the groove yeah yeah. yeah yeah when they that when they click well as a as a grid, it's like it's cool because you can't really tell <laughs> what's going on, but it adds something. Yeah, and we just kind of kept it like that cool yeah well actually i have a question yeah sometimes uh you're sometimes if you move the drum so you do the drum edits first right. and then you what if you you want that one to be a little late maybe after a transition do you then have an issue with the rest of the song do you have to push stuff no uh a lot of times say if you want uh well um this is just my preference whenever you do a drum fill mm -hmm. right um a lot of times uh, after you do the, the drum fill the one when you get back into the groove mm -hmm. um, I it's, no yeah. I know I like it rush oh, oh rush yeah. Yeah, that, that's, yeah yeah okay yeah it, it, yeah, I never I, thought about no, it yeah, I, got, no, that, I like that's it human nature yeah that's because like nature. every time if you listen to any good drummer like they always do a drum fill and they always rush to the one and then they get back into the groove yeah. So, so that's natural. Okay, yeah. yeah, so well, that's the most natural thing. So a lot of times I don't even slide it. I'll, I'll just I'll just do whatever drum feel that you do and yeah. then whatever you hit the one is, that could be like 30 ticks early. Okay. Yeah. And but then like but then like slightly like from and then if it's like really early, then you kind of like 
navig um the, the next two can't be like you 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 and then and then you start to compensate you know like the two a little a little early but a little later okay. and then third by the second bar you're back on the groove that's really cool because then you uh, have and this. then you don't yeah you don't feel that it's like stiff sounding right you know, it okay. sounds it sound natural and well well anthony's not comprehending this because every fill he does always fills over the bar line because <laughs> it can't fill, fill, for, a fill for him can't start, it can't can't end on the beat it's gotta go like that's how you learn from you like and, and neil pert is the king of that like he always oh my gosh, fills over yes. and it, that's I don't why know where like, i got that <laughs> you Probably from Alan Dawson. Fill over the bar line. I mean, I tried to do it only once in a song, though. <laughs> once in a song. <laughs> I used to do it once every four bars. But... <laughs> that's a great. That's that's an excellent point, Carrie. That's an excellent. Yeah, point. that's really. That's actually news to me because I don't think like that. Well, because yeah. well, you kind of do it naturally, yeah, probably when you it, play. Yeah. You know. Yeah, a lot of times, like you, you, li you listen. I, I think it's I, it's. I mean, even I, I mean, like I mean, that. like physically too. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like you do this, and then you want to do crash. You know, yeah. and then you automatically you want to kind of like okay, tell your body to do that. But so then, like you, you, then if uh -huh. you study how John Bonham does it, that's 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 like the Bible of it, because like whatever he does, it's like they always, it's almost like he's always pushing, but like yeah. he's he's yeah. probably I think yeah. the prime example. He's of like, that. I mean, right. he always like whenever he does a fill, whatever he does between that fill and then to navigate the next two bars, it's like. It, it's it's like, incredible. It's like, well, hearing the, like, um, I haven't heard it for drums, but hearing, like, ACDC, like, the rhythm part of one of their, like, you shook me all night long, and it, like, it does exactly what you said at the chorus. It speeds up at the end, and then to the verse, as it comes down, it slows down just a little bit, but it's not, like, it's just music. Yeah, no, it's it's, not, it's, it's, it's just, not like pulling yeah, a break. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, you, it's just yeah. that little bit, and it's like, you can't, like, you're, 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 do, that, that's amazing, Dave. That, that's a really good yeah, point. Yeah, that was, uh, that, that took a while to realize too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, 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 it's yeah. kind of like the psychology of. Oh well, we've been through all the stages of, of uh, <laughs> levels of perfection. Right. Because I mean, like when you first get, like the first time I saw somebody working on it was Jim Lightman, who actually just passed away recently. We were really sad, but I went to his studio in Middleton. And he it wasn't even Pro Tools then. It was called Sound, Sound Designer Tool. or Sound, Sound, Sound Tools. Sound, 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 Sound Tools, Sound right? Tools. And I was watching him. And he was taking snare hits that were late and moving them early. And I was the first time I've ever seen this. And, and, and I'm like, why are you doing that? And he's like, oh, I'm just fixing that. And he's, I'm like, well, why don't you just have him play it again? <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, I said to myself, this is never going to catch on. What a waste of time. <laughs> what a waste of time. <laughs> a year from there, Anthony's never leaving his house, moving all his tracks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny how you know, your perception changes? Then 10 years later, everybody was using it. And then we held out for a long time we didn't use it for a long time um you know i think it wasn't until like maybe 2000 or something that we finally right. said uh, okay we're right. gonna, we're gonna I, get into I, this recently when then, i saw you doing it I, my whole world went like oh i'm now a good guitar player <laughs> it's like you oh, know. And, then, and then the early the early 2000 is when um we kind of overuse it not just us we kind we we the just kind of yeah it's the industry we just kind of follow what's going on yeah and then it was everything that was, was perfect. that was the overused uh kind of era yeah. uh i mean it's got its coolness it, there's a coolness you know too. yeah it's you know but we've learned over the years that there's yeah. there's not just one perfect there's many perfects and it's choosing exactly. the right perfect <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that is yeah. true for sure, for sure for sure in the same uh, way like all those old drum machines like had their own grooves sure, yeah. that mm -hmm. became songs and like if you get that drum machine it's like well they just put it on the first play and that that's yeah. that song well, some some know. of the lindrum stuff that prince was exactly doing was, you know. and then what, are, what are, he was what, triggering stuff though a lot of people don't realize that oh, a lot of, a lot oh. of times he was triggering kicks and snares like uh, you know he was playing and, yep. and the lindrum was following him Oh, cool. So that's why some of that stuff has a really even yeah. more special feel than you can even yeah. put your finger on. Yeah, yeah. You can't kind of teach what he had inside of <laughs> him. Yeah. <laughs> this is me. Yes, this is you. That might be from April 2. Maybe I'm playing your guild, or maybe it's my Martin. No, it's your Martin. Okay, it could be. Feels great. 
my it. guild, I'd know because it's always out of tune. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it's like what, but um, yeah. Um, I it, mean, actually, real quick, that Martin, I think I got like nine years ago, and it's one of those guitars where it's starting. It sounded better every two years. Oh, you just wow. play it so much, and it starts to sound better and better the more time you spend playing it. Yeah, my my guild has a thing of like you just have so to. So does tune wood it. age? Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it like, doesn't have any finish, so the wood is kind of just well, they, there. It's just raw. They, you know. I read a story about um, to cure a, an acoustic guitar faster. Mm -hmm. Some people would put Jack Daniels inside the um, oh. the hole, and and for like a few weeks they they would like pour Jack Daniels in there, Whoa. and it would age the Whoa, well, <laughs> and it would age the guitar. And, um, and, and there was one story about some guy that got pulled over and the, <laughs> and the whole car smelled like Jack Daniels and he was going to get arrested. He's like, no, I swear, I just poured in my guitar to age yeah. it. And the guy, the cop's like, all right, that's a new one. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. Oh, look well, into I, that. I, know, I know the guilds made in Rhode Island because they used to, I think they used to cure their wood outside their factory and it would be like 100 and humid in the summer and then like freezing cold in the winter that the wood would like Condense. go through all those things wow. that that's and they would like all the companies if you watch your thing they leave their wood out for years before they make the good really guitar. Oh, i did paul, not know that oh yeah that like like paul reed smith like the, the wood is so like i think it was the paul reed fact paul reed smith or gibson factory you go in their wood rooms and they have things of like you can't get this anymore this like redwood because it's like six like they've saved right. it saved um, it yeah, like yeah. oh so it really really matters but i think i think a guitar really matters by like the love and like the songs and stuff put in you really can't like you know it's not that you know yeah i like to believe that too that's the songs you wrote on it so to get back to the um what um I don't want to talk as much about the editing, but what do you remember how you kind of went up to the sonic approach of the guitars, like for uh, the sounds, like we just trying to fit them in, or do, what were you thinking? Talk yeah. about your reamping thing where you take like sometimes a different signal path and create your own version of it and blend it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't remember if that was done on this one, though. Okay. Uh, sometimes, yeah. Um, um, I, would if, if use, people, I, yeah. I would use an amp. Oh, sure. To, to 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 not necessarily to distort it, but to actually give it like a different color when I, you combine with the yeah. with the acoustic guitar. I think guitar. that that acoustic that I did because I I'm not doing this stuff as much as Ableton because you talk about it because there's some glitching things, but um. I think with that that might have been an Ableton one where it was my acoustic that I did distort like in Ableton yeah, yeah, I start yeah. putting the and it start, gets that weird sound that you can't get from a distortion guitar because right. it's like right. I really want to cool. explore um, over uh, distorting a, an acoustic through a cassette machine yeah. like, because oh, the yeah. Stones did that yeah, on all those uh, yeah. those early like Brown Sugar and yeah. all that that whole all, that was actually an acoustic guitar yeah. yeah and I would love to to play with that there's got to be a way to well, do it well a lot of the stuff that we give to you. Yeah that comes out rougher and some of the new stuff is acoustic that just gets a right. little bit yeah, more yeah, processed. Yeah, 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 I could as, tell. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, like, or we're going for like the over-distorted mic effect, you know, yeah. or right. something. Right. You got those drum sounds so creamy, man. Yeah, of cool. course. <laughs> just a... Yeah. Um, that cholesterol. Combination of snare sample and just multiple... Blends in nicely though. Yeah. It's got that fat and low mint. Yeah. I like the dryness too. Some swinging percussion I think would be cool in parts <clears throat> of it to kind of like marry the different swing factors together, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah, so Karate's working on the drums and you're talking about the game plan of the song. Um, yeah. Um, um, what did you say about the drums? The creaminess? I Creamy, the low mids in there. Yeah, fat. fat. High <laughs> cholesterol. <laughs> said high cholesterol. <laughs> it's funny how you can affect the feel of the whole song by how you swing a shaker or a tambourine. There's yeah. so many different places that you can place that feeling. You know? Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Definitely. Thank and you. I like to listen to, there's a band called NRBQ. That's you know, from a way, way back. But there's a couple of albums where... It's the, it, it almost hurts your head because the drummer could play this weird thing in between a in between straight sixteenths and not a shuffle, 
and it's like it's almost like it almost turns your head around sideways you know <laughs> cool. it's, it's like it's really it's it, it's but that had a huge effect on me and i realized that you can do the same thing with percussion you can kind of like if a song is playing super straight you can swing a certain way to make this to, to create this this feeling mm -hmm. it's, and it's funny it's like you kind of have to experiment a lot with it because sometimes the most effective one almost sounds wrong when you solo it and then you listen to it with the music and it's like whoa that just you know comes well, to life exactly in because in the last episode of the street caviar and the one we went through all the tracks we did an, um the end percussion it's exactly that like 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 you said like you did it all yourself um it's very well put together but there's one part distinctly a cowbell part that it's it's out of time yeah like and it's it, but and there's a couple that are like that but it's out of time in a perfect way because it's how someone would play it in a drunken thing party you yeah, know yeah, like yeah. so it's not out of time yeah so yeah. it's like i know exactly what you're saying yeah, with that. and as you'll see like some of the percussion it's, it's not an like, exact science you can't look at numbers and go okay should be 120 240 480 right. 720 it doesn't work like that well, and <laughs> also too with percussion like a lot of times like you're thinking shaker ch -ch -ch -ch, and like sometimes with especially with yeah. you two like you go Ksh, or you do Ksh, and it's like yeah. that fits in more and sure. grooves more than like good and plenty good yeah. and plenty good and plenty good and plenty in this song specifically <laughs> you do the you do kind of like a crescendo yeah you know and it's exactly where the crescendo where the crescendo like peaks it's that's where the groove is. It's kind of just like a shh. Oh, but neat. where it peaks is in like you're even. I think even in, here we hear you like put it in exactly where yeah. it should go, and it it just kind of swings everything into the next you know bar. Some space in that bar will be cool later. I'll do that. You know. that's Bronson's like little guitar interlude at the end um uh Cariotti, like what what um when you have a guitar like solo instrumental do you do you approach it differently than a like other guitar part or do you you know just kind of see what it like how it fits in the thing well on that on that particular one the parts uh actually already fit so um you know and it was just a matter of you know where you want to put it oh, cool. um as far as you know the is it like in the front and then is it like left and right um and in that case it was actually left and right but more in the front not way and, out um but more you know like more in the front of the stage okay um okay and then the guitar when that happened i don't know if you hear it um, but it, the guitar actually becomes uh, a little bit in the background. The way to do it, you you can you can use uh, room reverb or whatever on your acoustic, and then when you turn that on, all of a sudden your it pushes it back a little. Yeah, bit. your oh. acoustic goes just slightly, you know. Oh, cool. That way you can like kind of perceive that even though it's not like up loud, you can kind of perceive this is like a new thing get, getting introduced and getting your attention because it's. Up front, yeah, you know, yeah, definitely. Um, it's always important to create space like that yep. as new things enter because it helps the listener be able to know what to focus on. So it, it yep. so like in, I'm kind of comprehending what you're saying. It's like eat, eat like because so many people like to copy and paste. You're like even though this is the same part, you change the acoustic to make yeah. that part. Well, fit. just sonically, yeah, yeah. The no. part, the part stays the same. It, yeah, exactly. But like yeah. it, it's it's in such a copy and paste world. You think, oh, it just stays the same, and like, no, or, it's or like, like turn the volume up and down. Sometimes yes. that works, but when yeah. you when when you can like just call up something like a room, a small mm -hmm. room, uh, you can audition a few room, and you'll know when it's the right stumble one. Stumble across something, you yeah. know, and then you just use that, and then just to push it back a little bit, so you don't really push back the um, the level, but you just basically make it sound more. Um, no, no, I think making uh, room for it diffused. is yeah. Yeah, yeah, when it's more diffused, less focused, then when you have other instrument that's more focused, the then you bring attention yeah. to that yeah. part, you know. That's good. That's great. That's great. Yeah, it's a great little... 
trick or, or yeah. just you know yeah, 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 yeah. thing to remember. I mean, it's 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 simple, but uh, you know, very useful. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the simplest things you just have to not remember, but just have to do. You know, right. it's like that's not just you know. Yeah. How how often would you say? You use that, like in this song, uh, this is one example, um, but do you kind of, is this kind of like part of automation process going? Yeah, it's sections? automation because you, okay. you have it set up. You just have, you, you just have like in this, actually, I, I do have a set of uh, reverb used on the guitars, on the acoustic guitar that as like a basic one. And then I don't remember exactly, but sometimes it's just a matter of um, making the room a little bigger. Okay. Yeah. And then you cut the filter going in so that you push, you push the instrument back in the stage you know awesome. um, so are you making it cool. less low end on it the reverb yeah 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 that's what uh, I mean. the reverb yeah yeah and and yeah you, a lot of times I do use a uh, reverb even though you you know it could be perceived dry but dry where mm -hmm. dry in this room yes dry uh -huh. you know uh, that's an art to yeah. do that. yes yeah. yes yes, yes heavy yes, stuff it, yeah um, no, but it, no, but it, but like like I'm thinking like what you're trying to comprehend yeah. like in a live show, like maybe someone's pulling the volume yeah, down. Yeah, on the live show so, it's easy. The, the okay, beca yeah, in. because in the in the live show situation you already have the room. Yes. You know, and then, then, then and then it's yes. a matter it's a matter of pushing up the fader or pushing down yes. the fader. But mm -hmm. in the recording, you kind of have to simulate that. Ah, and the way to simulate yes. that is mm -hmm. to use the tools that you have at your disposal. Yes. Even as a visual, though, you picture two lead guitar players walking to the front of the stage. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. easier. It's easier uh, as far as uh, uh, um, you know visual uh, uh, perception. Shoulder to when, shoulder. When you like when, you, when, you, <laughs> when yeah. you're seeing it, yeah. but then when you're not seeing it, you try to like okay, you kind of you picture it. You know, you visualize mm -hmm. it, and then yeah, music has a visual yeah. component. Yeah, we're still we're still trying to achieve something that everybody like is real. That is something simple. Yeah. Guys walking to the front because right. it's their turn to solo, right. and yeah. they go yeah. back. Yeah, and and, and 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 like and like when you're trying to do something like this, it's always the little subtle differences that bring something out. You know, like right. Because yeah. if it's going to be too drastic and people notice it, then it right. didn't work. You know, right? You yeah, know? yeah. That's it depends. Like the intention. If it's uh, it, yes. sometimes I mean, you do want that. It'd drastic be bold sometimes yes. you know yes. no but for what we're talking about in this part it just kind of for everything yeah. you said it's seamless it Basic one. Interlude guitar. Oh, okay. It's cool. Great sound. Yeah, it's cool. There's a, a part where it clipped though, but I think I got it under control. Okay, cool. It's like the. Uh, like the overloading okay. the uh, input. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I kind of have to like dull it out yeah no it sounds good though so at least now it's like yeah it's like a, a saturation distortion rather in than instead of a clip yeah i mean it's still ugly but not not too bad yeah that's that's the thing that's tough to get rid of is when you run an effect and then you clip you clip the effect can, oh, oh um, it wasn't me recording. It was him with his uh, guitar. Yeah, it uh, sounds kind of like it's just not, yeah, so it, it, dense. It, 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 it it's goes, farting. It goes, it goes uh, like the high end goes crackle. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah a lot of times you uh, you have no choice uh, to but to filter the high end. A lot of times you have to like go down to like even below one k, which sucks. Uh, wow. Yeah. 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 Um, that's a really good point of um, of that because I, I I thought I'd clip the preamp. And that's, no. that's kind of hard to do without, like, 
hearing it. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, so it was in his guitar effect because I heard yeah. that and I kind it's of in the guitar chain. No, yeah. and, and and I sometimes hear that as part of the sound, but like <laughs> if that's a pain in the ass, I hear it all the time. <laughs> like, it's like, I hear it in my playing. Well, like, uh, again, that's also a taste because like maybe maybe I have a lower tolerance. That's why it's like ah, oh, I have to set the filter below one k even. Okay. Because it's it's because uh, like there it's unpleasant. I, it's unpleasant. Yeah, yeah, I like certain distortion, and then if it's like if it's like a distortion in the in the harmonic sense, like yeah. in the middle, and then it goes, you know, like you know, complex. Then that's a cool distortion. Yeah. yeah. But then when it's just like crackle, kind of like you know, like tickles your ears a little too much. It's kind of just like so much packed into this. Yeah, this and you can tell that's like yeah. something is not handling it and well. And it is supposed to be like this airy element so right. we were taking like there's no headroom in the right. reverb it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. it totally but thank that. thankfully though that particular part it doesn't really need those high stuff but if you but but if it, if it was like a part where it's like a really chiming guitar where yeah. you need to hide, then we're pretty much fucked. And, you I, know? and I think Anthony, you have Anthony supplement. Like I think he, I believe so. Yeah, he, I oh think yeah. He puts a I few think notes that was, yeah. a few very selective yep. notes, and I didn't even notice that. Like really, like make it sound the way I thought it sounded. No, make, make <laughs> like, it sound. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> like when I heard that back, I'm like, ah, we did a great job. We'll be like, let's keep doing that same I'm guitar like, thing. Yeah, exactly. And then I heard it back. It's like I, well, I don't remember what I did. I'd have to hear it. No, I think you just put a few like. You yeah, mimic, like extra, like, like mimic ex, uh, um, 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 I don't an, even, another track that actually does the same thing, but not necessarily all those notes together. Just, mm -hmm. just, just highlight just what you, needs yeah. to be there, and then it kind of like fill in the gap. Oh, that's cool. So this is Anthony recording percussion, and I assume Cariotti's not around. It's probably at late yeah, night. I think, I think uh, Anthony was doing. It. And this is very unique because Anthony left the recorder oh, that on. One of, the, one of those. Hit the head. That sounds great. Hear the swing? I love, yeah. Three other tambourines to try here. Am I talking to myself? <laughs> Three other tambourines to try. Right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I like the life that the, head, totally the head gives it. Yeah. yeah. It's full of imperfections, you can hear it. We do extra shaker on the different shaker on the outro, different feel. Not swingy, yeah, it's swingy. Shut the others off. That's totally different. That was cut from a lot. Like you definitely did a lot of takes. I mean, they were all good. Yeah. Why? Why don't you explain what what some of the instruments we were hearing? And... I think um, I was using a couple of different tambourines. Looks sounded like one of them had a head on it. Um, I like the the Beatles always had that. I think they call it a. It's a name for it, but yeah, there's a name for that. It's a I, Brazilian yeah. <laughs> penda something. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that's. That, that has a tone and I, I have a bunch of different tambourines a lot of times I'm listening for a note um, and I'll go through a whole bunch of tambourines and find one that when you hear the skin it's pleasant harmonically uh, it's yes. funny it's like it, it, it can be a subtle thing but it, it you know oh, it fits I, in though I, yeah I'm always amazed at how you do that and Bronson's really good at the studio like I won't even notice what he's doing. Like he'll be tuning up the tom, yeah. And it's like sure, it makes a difference. Yeah, like yesterday we moved the pillow. You know, what well, was more of attack, but like sure, get learning the, from you, it's like the boom kick worked on one. The next song, it's like no, we need. Sometimes the, I'll push my thumb into the head of the tambourine until I get it to yeah, the note definitely. That, that I want, and I'll just leave it there, like pushed that much, you know. So yeah, and, 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 that, and that, that's probably a very subtle thing that you can yeah to just do as every as day. you do yeah. And then um, then I would do some with the with the jingles I don't know if they call them jangles jingles whatever where you keep the tambourine more stationary so that they, they make more sound but if you tilt it they mute yep so sometimes it's a different it's like you're you're playing a rhythm but you're also changing the angle yeah to get like a different sound so it, there's a lot of subtleties in it that people don't even think about really and the same thing with shakers you know you can play them straight on you can the motion of your hand the, the more motion you make depending on the tempo of the song that's what's going to change the feel 
Oh you know, yeah. If you do a short motion, it's going to be less swingy. If you do bigger motions, it's going to, you know, in relation to the tempo of the song. So it's there's really no science to it. I just do a bunch of it until I find the magic, and then I sift through it. Having like worked with you a bunch, and having you heard and watched you and seen it, I can't tell you how true that is. And it's it's almost more important what he just said about the motion of it and where versus where you hit it because it's always a sound coming back they you know that like needs to be in time yeah. as much as just junk junk you know cuz yeah, you can't you can't look at it on a screen and go okay i want all these mm-hmm. peaks to be like on the grid if you do that it's not going to feel good no no yeah. it, but but even 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 not even thinking of the grid but like when you're playing a you're think you're usually just thinking of the mm, mm, yeah. not the mm, cha 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 mm, you know like which you should be sure know? a lot of times when i'm coming up with a part for a shaker or a tambourine like I tr- I'll try putting the the motions on the upbeats, like for the accents, or even on the second sixteenth note, or even on the fourth sixteenth note. I will I will literally try all, all right. of them and in a pass, and then I go back and I listen. I'm like, and then I hear like a section where it like just gels better with the bass and drums, and I go, okay, that's that's what I need to do. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then from that point on, that's what I do. But when I'm first exploring, I I I've, I try not to go in with any. You know, sure. conceived motion. Cause sometimes preconceived notion. Because sometimes what you thought was going to be the best thing is not the best thing. You know. Yeah. And I think this is Cariati working on the sixth string bass, which is that sounds like it. That sounds like it. Yeah. Like Cariati was saying before, it has a, it sounds it's in a different range than the Yeah, yeah, it's closer. To Yeah, and it's got the weird pickups, the like lipstick. What a great song. There's a reverb on it. And I think that's just direct, like into our 2610. We don't yeah. like amp because it makes a ton of noise usually. flat seven thing I don't know if it's gonna end up sometimes it works yeah 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 if not we're just gonna go plain yeah I think plain be better right there yeah that's Anthony's way of saying kill it <laughs> <laughs> well Mozart did it <laughs> um, too many notes yeah too many notes um, <laughs> Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, th- like we were talking about before, like at the, it kind of got in the bridge, but um, you could hear Cariati working on the that this six right. string bass or baritone, and it has a complete different sound. It used to be used to fill in between guitar and bass, and I think we use that there just because it, it's a cool. It's a great line. That. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a great line. It's got a bounce. Yeah, you know, it's wonderful. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite parts. And then you can still hear. Actually, I did hear the synth bass. In, oh, okay, in that okay. moment, yeah, 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 because yeah. it's like the way you and when I started, I kind of forgot all the bases kind of meld together even yeah, before yeah, I yeah, gave yeah. to you. So it's kind of like you did a great job of yeah, filtering yeah. out what. No, parts. I mean, yeah, combination is cool. Yeah. Um, and so it's good to have yeah. you to like pick the parts. It, which well, are good. it becomes <laughs> a problem when it when it starts <laughs> to sound like a train wreck, you know. <laughs> but uh, not not in that. Uh, well, and, and I think I think that's a big thing I've learned from you guys in what we do demo wise. Like we have like a bunch of songs to give to you, but a lot of times it's shutting off a bunch of stuff and realizing what we have for you will be our final chorus or our final verse. Like that's everything on, mm-hmm. and we need to work backwards. And then and I then, do the same thing with like I'll I'll come up with way more parts than you guys end up hearing, yes. and I just kind of filter them out. You know, it's like kind of sifting. I think that is the biggest one of the biggest things of being a good producer songwriter is like 
getting rid of all your babies except yeah. for one or two yeah that, like then yeah. it becomes then yeah, those that, babies become perfect sure it's hard mm -hmm. to, to i'm guilty of earlier in my career like just being in love with everything i did so i would leave it all on and it's like not always the best way <laughs> that's why that's why that's why instagram and youtube are great now you put yeah. those videos and up they're, and gone. You, and yeah. they're gone it's like it's i can overplay here yeah it's, it's gone it's gone in one minute exactly you know? it's exactly. not 20 years later when you're in the supermarket and you're like oh my god <laughs> did he really make this <laughs> That's my banjo ukulele. We have, I have one at home. I have one at the studio. Like it, it sometimes it's annoying, but it cuts through. It's in everything. And it kind of sounds so good. I, I'm like ashamed that I use it, but it's like. <laughs> no, it's awesome. <laughs> it, it always it, sounds so fun. Yeah, anytime, anything it's on, it brings this like fun yeah. element. And I think that's kind of a thing of like, you know, a lot of times what wouldn't fit here. And a lot of times if you grab something like that or like yeah. like this, like adding the weird synth bass, you wouldn't think in kind of a country song yeah. to add no. like a really, you know, like, yeah, yeah. and it really works. It just kind of yeah. fits in. I mean, you made it blend in. I, I can't wait to hear it in the stems, but it's yeah, like, I mean, they, they, you know, like even though this, the, the synth bass is like a subby sound, but it's not really on this song. It's not featured as like a subby song because it's just, not what the song is exactly you know but it's <laughs> it's got a nice bed underneath yeah. uh, but Great that's texture. yeah that's about it yeah mm. yeah How, uh, do you is there parts in the song where that's that synth bass is going at the same time as the regular bass not the guitar not the six string not bass. the six string you know what? Uh, I don't remember exactly oh. though. How yeah. would you, if it if it was like how how would you treat that? I guess because you have these two and they're typically like down yeah. the middle. Um, well, you just uh, um, a lot of times like the, a quick first thing to do is to figure out uh, your electric bass, what the the principal uh, frequency area is. Say if it's like between ninety to like one twenty, mm -hmm. then on your sub you want to kind of notch out that, that first spot. thing. First thing to okay. do uh, on your sub on your sub, and then and then you notch it. Uh, usually I start with like three dBs and mm -hmm. pretty wide. So like say if it's like if the principal bass is about 80 to 100, mm -hmm. that'll probably do like around 90 with like a pretty wide Q uh -huh. uh, on the sub. Cut it like 3 dB and then start pushing the level up until it sounds okay that you can hear both, but they're not fighting so uh -huh. much. And you, you kind of start from there. Yeah, kind of carve you it. Know? Do you do yeah. anything with the width then to probably one of those? Do you like even just a little bit like... Oh, uh, the width? It if it's if it's the a stereo sound yeah the width but a lot of times bass is mono yeah so you don't really need to do okay uh, are are you talking about the width of that um the keyboard one might have been stereo may I mean maybe it should have been but that doesn't but mean still that bass it bass you wouldn't want like totally stereo but I've I've heard of a a trick where if it's a mono signal it's like um what's that effect called the Haas effect or oh yeah when yeah, it's the two. yeah yeah sometimes just like if it's like this instead yeah. of just like that yeah. sometimes it like can make that space yeah so I was yeah. wondering you how you could do that um, okay and, and uh, it's it could be as simple as putting a a, a slow stereo chorus you could do oh, that wow. yeah cool okay yeah yeah but it has to be like a stereo the, mm -hmm. that that's the only way it will do the Haas effect which is like circling back and forth okay that makes like sense a, yeah. Um, but I can't remember if that one was a mono or a stereo. It was. It, it should have been stereo, but doesn't yeah. mean like my key. That keyboard sometimes gets plugged in mono when it's right. Be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, uh, anyhow, the the frequency is more important than yeah. Um, whether it's left and right because like you ultimately for a bass, especially bass frequency, mm -hmm. you want it to sound right when everything is in mono. To get back to the banjo. Do you have any techniques, tricks about sonically working with a banjo or ukulele? Because they are uh, a very distinctly 
sounding instrument. Not, well, not really, because the the, the the instrument sounds like that. Like you just put a mic and it will, <laughs> it will translate exactly. <laughs> like that. I know, I know. Which is a very very pointy uh, 900 to 1k. Yeah, like I played a gig without not being mic'd, and you can hear that thing like. From like, <laughs> yeah. like, that, like I don't even think. Yeah. So no, it just just basically just deal with it where where it is. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, I think. I think the more important part is uh what the part is like yeah you yeah, know yeah. in that case it actually complements to the other two guitars and that which and is perfect part of the reason a lot of the instruments we use have it they kind of fit in different sonic ranges right so that's when we're putting a song together it's like well something's missing from here let's put that in yeah. and like sometimes just playing one chord and it's like that's it that you mm -hmm. wanted to hear something there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't hear the pre-chorus it's like the mood change there I'm um, sorry, what? I, I don't like in the pre-chorus. It's better to just change the mood there. Yeah, can't, can't have it anyway, because like this, uh, this I think this is going to be the main thing. Um, and it's barely swinging, so you might need to add another uh, guitar like mimicking that exactly. Okay. Um, the, it's like something like... Yeah, with more, well, with No, no, with more gain. Uh, just like that, that's cool. It's a great part, but uh, by itself, it uh, it won't sound like you know like a like a main part. It needs like reinforcement. Reinforcement, exactly. This is because this is actually like an interlude. There's no vocal going on right, here, yeah, yeah. So it needs like you know like a almost like a lead sound. I mean, doesn't yeah. need to go crazy. Yeah, but, no, I know. You know because the mood is right, it just yeah. needs to be uh... You didn't put any extra effects on that guitar that's a spacey guitar already, did you? No, Okay. it's zero. Okay. I would take it out on the second and fourth figure, that spacey one. It's like, it, let it go away. The spacey Which, one, the, the, -na -na. the high, high ringy. Off, two, three, four, back on, two, three, right, four, and off. And there's just there's nothing really valuable in those other holes. That's a great note. That does a lot. Something else will, you know, make the transition less abrupt. But even if it's abrupt, I like it. Yeah, I but like, like I said, it needs to yeah. sound more. Um, yeah, no, we'll. we'll, we'll, we'll We'll make something like different. a deliberate. Na, 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 that's those. That, that's actually a cool it guitar a line. line. Yeah. That's the one that goes into verse two. Correct. Okay. Only only time it happens. Yeah. I mean, the process kind of just happened right before our, our yeah. ears. Yeah. It's, it's like we listened to it and we're like, you know, trying to figure out how to optimize it, and it turned out that doing it every other time made it stand out more yep it's because then you hear it when there's yeah. coming out of a space you know I, that's one of my things that i experiment a lot with is sometimes taking something away makes brings more attention to it yeah and it kind of sound because it happens because you take away that second time it kind of sounds so much bigger it sounds like the room that element is happening in is bigger because it has all this time to like your be brain done. has a way to judge it against yeah. something else against all know? the other yeah. yeah that's a great note yeah, and I, I don't think we catch on recording till the end, you kind of supplementing. Um, you don't do a ton. You don't even, I don't think you even play the whole line, but you just play a few keynotes to bring up what Cariati said with the sound, like just yeah. getting a little, because yeah. it needed to be, have a little more like aggression, little yeah. trouble. And I think what ended up happening, uh, or what ended up happening in the final thing was uh, Anthony simply uh, added. Uh, a string thing that oh, yes. fades. Yes, 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 what? yes. Oh, and it cuts. So, yeah. Oh, yes. And oh, that, was, it was that, was yes, no, yes. that was enough. No, that was enough of an event. Uh, and then as far as the sound concern, uh, I think later on I was able to uh, to do to duplicate the track and uh, do some uh, certain frequency distortion oh, and cool. to bring it up. Uh, and, and But as far as making an event, 
that one uh, that one thing was enough. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay so yeah. to get back to your, your bigger concern wasn't really in the sound. It was more you needed more of an event. Well, it was both. yeah, it was both because like at the time, because when uh, uh, you know during the analysis, it was like okay, uh, here's an interlude, mm -hmm. uh, but because the the guitar. It's a little too spacey. I was, I wish it was, a, you know, like a little drier. Yeah. Uh, so you can actually bring it to the front because yeah, when, same. whenever it's that wet, the, it doesn't matter how loud you bring it. It's just gonna sound yep. like this mm -hmm. yep. big giant thing yep. in the background. Yep. You know. Yep. Um, sure. No, no, it's a great, but, great point. And in, yeah. in, 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 in our terms of recording it, it's, it, it's something good to learn because there, there would have been no difference for us recording that like with a lot drier. Sound right. or you send it, a DI of it too. But the thing mm -hmm. is, that some things with the DI is a DI I usually take after the effects because sometimes the effects makes the sound. So right. if, you know, like, yeah. and it's the speaker, like, and the mic thing that you can't rechange. Right. So like, right. sometimes it's it's a verse of yeah. that. Like, we won't get that. You and know, uh, one thing, um, this is true for a lot of instances, mm -hmm. uh, is that when you record. Um, something that has uh, either reverb or delay on your pedal uh, you almost always want to make it uh, a, like 10% softer than you think it should be you know sure. why because when you uh, when you're in the mix it's almost inevitable that you're gonna compress that signal Ooh, yeah. okay. to Need make it pop rum. you want to yeah. make it pop you know with the, the band and then uh, a lot of times by the time you compress it if you have a, a loud uh, echo or reverb, that's gonna that's yep. gonna take over yep. before the before the actual which is the uh, why you want to compress it in the first place. Mm -hmm. yep. You know. Yep. So yeah, that's just like a tip. That's that that's well, gonna work on ninety nine percent. And uh, and and uh, and I kind of always struggle with like you know um, you know we're playing guitar like you know do you keep your effects on because it makes a sound. Oh yeah, do you, you do of it, course. And, yeah, keep but, it. But but in that that instance, it it like you're saying, it was a little too wet. It's like it was a little too wet. We could we yeah. could have done more of it. And no, like hey, afterwards, you yeah. can just throw. Because you on. can you can always yes. if it's not wet enough, you can always yes. add just like a uh, like a simple echo, yeah. and then it will yeah. make it sound like it came from the pedal. And and if if you're snobbish and not want to do anything, you can always reamp it. In like you well, if you if you have the di well yeah if you have the di <laughs> yeah if you, you have to yeah. have the di and but you know like the, the the sound is part of the vibe when yes. you know when you're recording you you want you want to play that way because of that echo you want to play that way because of that yes. reverb mm -hmm. so. changes the way you play but the thing is it's like it's just like if you can remember like if you think okay this is perfect dial it back about ten percent that's good um, to know yeah that's a really that, good practice and then yes. you know it's just like a utility thing that is very useful and don't worry about like not having enough echo you're gonna have a lot of echo <laughs> for sure and, you know? and like you said you can always add it later you it's can like, add it later if it, it's, not, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. it's like there's plenty things that you can't you can't take back you know yeah exactly yeah well that wraps it up for episode 11 we'll be back in the next podcast to pick up where we left off Rockets of an electric lecture. Rockets.